Hello, this is Haku Debian, and I am here with Cthulhu, the mythos. I'm here with the person and who's the deity whose name literally made in the mythos called what it is, is to this day. Also known as Cthulhu. This mythos was written by someone who is a known on on xenophobe who would nobody I hope has similar opinions to. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now we're gonna get right into this. In his house at Rila, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. Cthulhu is also known as Tulu, Clulu, Clulu, Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Sikthulu, Cthulhu, Cthulhu, no Cthulhu, 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 Kutinlu, Katulu, Katilu, Dulu, Zululu, Katulu, I think, Katlu, Chulu, Dulu, Katulu, 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 Kuyu, Kulu, Chulu. Kyu Tulu Tak Oika Nagi Ojingo High Priest of the Great Old Ones, the Great Dreamer, the Sleeper of Rila, the Star Spawn, Him Who Lies Dreaming, Him Who Will Rise Again, Him Who Is to Come, Lord of the Watery Brit uh, of the Watery Abyss, and the Sleeping God. He was born on the planet world of the twenty third Nebula. He is from outer space. And he is related to his great grandfather, as thought his grandfather, Yaxel thought his grandmother, who I'm not going to actually say the name of because it sounds way too much like a slur, so I'm going to call her Shub Granny. Nug, a parent of his, Hasser, his half brother, Anotoa, his offspring, Yatakta, his other offspring, Yat Almag, one of another offspring. Ella, another offspring. Tit, another offspring. Aned, his brother. Gadagia, his half sister. Naku, his other brother. Kasaga, Kasagda, his another sister. Tosa, another offspring. Tolu, another offspring. Leviathan, another offspring, and Shirasho, another offspring. He has two mates, that being Idya and his own sister Katsagda. His affiliation is with the Great Old Ones and as also his species. His first appearance is in the Call of Cthulhu. He has appeared in just H.P. Lovecraft of the novels, the Call of Cthulhu, the Dun the a nameless city with the Dunwich Horde at the Mountains of Venice, the Whisper in Darkness, and the Shadow over in, in Smith. And he's been created by H.P. Lovecraft. Now we've gone over that, we can go over the actual rest of this. Cthulhu is a fictional cosmic entity created by H.P. Lovecraft in a short story, The Call of Cthulhu. H.P. Lovecraft, as I already mentioned, is a well known racist and outright bigot. And I don't need to go into that any further because we already know all his story. First appearing in February 1928 issue of the Pope magazine in Weird Tales, he is suspected as an octopoid great old one of enormous power who lies in a death-like slumber in the second city of Rilla, beneath the Pacific Ocean. He is the namesake and the best-known element of the Cthulhu mythos, appearing in the works of numerous author authors following Lovecraft and frequently referenced in popular culture. 
here are some quotes from um characters that were in the call of cthulhu and this was obviously an h.p lovecraft work i'm going to just go by the characters there's names for this that's not dead which can eternal lie and with strange e aeons may even death may die from abdul well has read they were not composed altogether of flesh and blood they had shape but that shape was not made of matter when the stars were right, they could plunge from world to world through the sky. When the stars were wrong, they could not live. But although they no longer lived, they would never really die. They all lay in stone houses in the great city of Rila, of Rila. Preserved by spells of mighty Cthulhu for a glorious resurrection when the stars and the earth one might once more be ready for them. Castro on the nature of the old ones. When the stars have come right for the great old ones, some voice from outside must serve to liberate their bodies. The spells that preserve them intact likewise prevent them from making an initial move. Castro on the Cult of, of Cthulhu At the proper time, the secret priest would uh, take great Cthulhu from his tomb to revive his subjects and resume his rule of earth. Then mankind would have become... Um, as the great old ones, free and wild beyond good and evil, with laws and morals thrown aside and all men shouting and killing and reveling in joy. And then the liberated old ones would teach them the new ways to shout and kill and revel and enjoy themselves, and all the earth would flame with the holocaust of ecstasy and freedom. Castro <sighs> In my opinion, I think we already have too many ways to <sighs> ooh, 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 kill each other, but that's just me. I'm skipping the chant because I don't even want to try speaking in a, a literal extraterrestrial language. It's just not something I can do. The most detailed descriptions of Cthulhu are based on statues of the creature. One constructed by an artist after a series of doubtful dreams is said to have yielded simultaneous pictures of an octopus, a dragon, and a human character. Caricature. A pulp with tentacled head to mount a grotesque and scaly, a body with rudimentary wings. Another recovered by police from a raid on a murderous cult represented a monster vaguely anthropoid outline, but with an octopus-like head whose face was a mass of feelings, a scully rubbery looking body, prodigious claws and hind and four feet, and long narrow wings behind. Castro, a Cthulhu cultist, reports that the great old one are telepathic and knew all that was occurring in the universe. They were able to communicate with the first humans by involving their dreams, thus establishing the Cthulhu cult. But after or Elias sunk beneath the waves, the, the deep waters were full of the unprimal mystery through which not even thought can pass, had cut off this, this special intercourse, basically meaning that when in this mythical city sunk beneath the ocean, Cthulhu could no longer send any messages. So any nightmares of Cthulhu is more or less like that one episode of Futurama where I, I ruined the episode of... Uh, I forgot what it was called, actually. It was some stupid sitcom show. Worshippers. It's, known how, it's unknown how long the throng of those who worship if the dread Cthulhu is, but his cult has many cells around the globe. The cult is known for chanting its horrid fright is a ritual, which I'm not going to try and repeat, but I will, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the translation. We translate as, in his house at Rilla, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. This is often shortened to, which might possibly mean Cthulhu waits, Cthulhu dreams, or Cthulhu waits dreaming. Oh, these are just sources. We do not need to go over there then. When the creature finally appears, the story says that the thing cannot be described, you know, despite it already having been described multiple times and it being described as undescribable right now. 
but it's called the green sticky spawn of the stars with flabby claws and an awful squid head with riding feelers. Johansson's end's phrase, a mountain walked or stumbled, gives a sense of these creatures' scale. This is corroborated by Wilcox's dreams, which touch partly on, on a gigantic thing miles high, which, lock, which walked or levered about. <sighs> Cthulhu's pigs is having a worldwide cult centered in Arabia, with followers in regions as far flung as Greenland and Louisiana. I don't know the relation between America and Arabia uh, in the 20s, and if it was as bad as, let's say, the 2000s. I guess we'll have. I guess we'll see because I do remember or er, er, some other things about this particular book that I did not like. But there's a lot to not like about anything H.P. Lovecraft writes. There are idol there are leaders of the cult in the mountains of China who are said to be immortal. Cthulhu is described by some of these cultists as the great priests of the great old ones who lived ages before there were any men and who came to the young world out of the sky. Cthulhu is also worshipped by the non-human creatures known as Deep Ones, from the shadow over Innsmouth. History Cthulhu is mentioned in other sources, sometimes described in ways that appear to contradict information given the most well-known accounts. For example, writing Cthulhu, writing including Cthulhu among the Great Old Ones, a quotation from the Necronomicon says, of the Old Ones, Great Cthulhu is our cousin, and yet can and it's by them only the Emily from the Dunwich Horror. But different Lovecraft stories and characters use the term old ones in widely different ways. Human explorers in Antarctica discovered an ancient city, for example, where the old ones were described as species of extraterrestrials, also known as elder things, who were at war with Cthulhu and his relatives or allies. The discoverers of the elder things were able to puzzle out a history from of Turo records. With the upheaval of new land in the South Pacific, tremendous events began. Another race, a land race of being shaped like octopi, and probably corresponding to the pr fabulous pre human spawn of Cthulhu, it soon began filtering down from the cosmic infinity and precipitated a monstrous war, which for a time drove the old ones wholly back to the sea. Later, peace was made and the new lands were given to the Cthulhu spawn while the old ones held the sea and the older lands. The Antarctic remained the center of the Old Ones, and civilization and all discoverable cities is built there by the Cthulhu's onward blotted out. Yet suddenly the land of the ends of the Pacific sank again, taking with them the frightful stone city of Rilla and all the, the cosmic octopi, so that the Old Ones were once again supreme on the planet. From, the, from At the Mountains of Madness William M. Dyer, part of the Antarctic Expedition, also notes that the Cthulhu spawn seems to have been composed of matter more widely different from, from that which we know than and was the substance of the Antarctic Old Ones. They were are able to undergo transformations and reintegrations impossible for their adversaries, and seem therefore to have originally come from even remoter gulfs of cosmic space. The first sources the first sources of the other beings can only be guessed at which it's bated breath. He notes, however, that the Gold Ones ha might have invented a cosmic framework to account for their occasional defeats. So, from Mountain's Madness. Other stories have the other thing in in which repeat this cosmic framework. And another account, Hitch, which is from The Whispers of Darkness, there is reference to the fearful myth of antedating the coming of man to, to the Earth. The Yog so of thought and, and Cthulhu cycles, which are hinted at in the Necronomicon, that suggests that Cthulhu is one of the Indies worshipped by the Indian and, and Maigo race. And repeats the other things claim that the Maigo will share his unknown material or composition. And Cthulhu's advent is also connected in some unknown fashion with supernova or possibly metaphoric or stars, such as major or historical or figures. I learned when Cthulhu first came and why half the great temporary stars of history had flared forth. 
The story is mentioned. The story is mentioned in passing, in that some humans call the Maiga the old ones. Investigation into the cult activity in Innsmouth, Massachusetts has revealed that Cthulhu is also worshipped by non-human creatures known as Deep Ones. That's from the Edo over Innsmouth. The priest Cthulhu is Cthulhu. <sighs> With the revelation of writing in detailing his relations, we have learned that Cthulhu descends from Yog Sothoth, possibly having been born on a world in the 23rd Nebula. He made with Idya on the planet Zoth. His offspring are Gotan on the Otoya, Yitzakta, Zoth Omag, and Zitila. That's from the Cthulhu Mythos Encyclopedia, 3rd edition. According to correspondence between Lovecraft and fellow author James F. Morton, Cthulhu's family tree is a deity Nug, itself the offspring of Yog Sothoth, and I'm going to call her Shove Granny again. Cthulhu in Lovecraft includes a fanciful family tree in which he himself descends from Cthulhu via Ashurasho, Yogash the Ghoul, Kabal the Serpent, and Goth the Barrier. I mean, the Burrow. Or, I imagine that's just Lovecraft being an edge lord. <sighs> George Ostrovsky named the non convinced snub the polyhedra after some great old ones with the great inverted snub Icos Decahedron as Cthulhu. Nay, Lovecraft transcribed the pronunciation of Cthulhu as Clulu, although S. E. Vidoshi points out, however, that Lovecraft gave several differing pronunciations on different occasions, and called Cthulhu in other weird stories. The first syllable of, of that is pronounced gutturally and very, and very thickly, and the U is, is about like that in full. So it's Kolu. And the first syllable it is not unlike a clue in sound. The H represents the guttural thickness. It's Klulu. Yeah, that's not rolling off the tongue quite as quickly as easily as as Cthulhu. According to Lovecraft, this is merely the closest that the human vocal apparatus can come to repre to reproducing the syllables of an alien language. Long after Lovecraft's death, the pronunciation Cthulhu it became canon, and the game in Call of Cthulhu endorsed it. Artistic imagery, which we're not going to look at right now. Cthulhu has served as direct inspiration for many modern artists and sculptures. Prominent artists that produce renderings of this creature include, but are not limited to, Paul Carrick, Stephen Hickman, Kevin Evans, Dave Carson, Francois Alanet, and Ursula Vernon. Vernon. Multiple osculptoral depictions of Cthulhu exist, one of the most noteworthy being Stephen Hickman's Cthulhu statue, which has been featured in the Spectrum Annual and is exhibited in display cabinets in the John Hay Library of Brown University of Providence. This statue of Cthulhu often serves as a separate object of inspiration for many works, most recent of which are the Cthulhu worshipper am amulets manufactured by Russian Drew, where for some time replica as of Hickman's Cthulhu statuette were produced by, Brown by Bowen Designs. They are currently not available for sale. Today, Hickman's Cthulhu's edges can only be obtained on eBay and other auctions. And that is it for Cthulhu. I'm gonna be honest, I actually had to re record this. <sighs> because I actually tried to say his grandmother's name and decided not to. And decided to be recorded because uh, it sounds bad. It sounds bad. It's written bad. Anyway, 
If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time with some more content. And I guess, given in the time that this video is coming out, it'll... Actually, I already know that the next video is on Azathoth. So I hope you enjoy the Blind Idiot God, as he is called, or the Eternal Dream. I don't think he's called that, but you know, the guy who basically dreams reality. Whew. I'll see you next time. Goodbye!